Hey guys, let's go for a walk today. Hey, what's up everybody? So I promised in my last video, which was a while ago, I apologize for the delay, that we would do a garden tour and finally getting around to it. We've had a lot of changes here on the Burbstead. We've had a lot of things that have grown and a lot of things that have um, not grown. And also a pretty major update for me is kind of a part of my family here towards the end of the video. So um, I'm calling this the the garden tour of highs and lows and tomatoes because right now we are in tomato harvest season for my garden. So hang on and I'll show you around. So we're going to start with the garden boxes. They are doing amazing and my neighbor's dog wants to say hi to me. So don't worry, he's real friendly. He just wants to say hi. But look at my garden boxes. At least that's what I call them. They're raised beds, but they look like boxes going up and down the, the aisle there. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of what's in each bed and how it's growing. But first, let's take a look at these because I'm sure I'm going to get a question about them sometime during the course of this. These are grow bags with my potatoes in them. This is the first time for me growing potatoes and I'm really excited about it so far. I don't know that I love the grow bags, but they're providing a good solution since the spot I wanted to plant potatoes in it wasn't going to be ready this year. So over there we've got sweet potatoes. The rest along the back row are Yukon Golds and then the front are French fingerling potatoes. So some of them are doing fantastic as you can see if we get a little closer. We've got flowering which means that they should be starting to grow tubers right now but not all of them are doing that. So the sweet potatoes are running a little bit behind even though they started out kind of booming. They haven't really done much since they've been planted. And the fingerlings are really slow with the exception of this one bag. So I don't know if that's just a sun issue or maybe there's too much water, but we're gonna figure it out. So this is bed number one and bed number one has artichokes in it. And some of them are doing really great and some of them are looking a little slow. I think part of it is an ant issue. I've got a lot of ants in this bed. They were in another bed and then moved, but this is a green globe and it's doing the best. So is that one. And then I've got a Violet de Provence and then these two over here are Colorado Red Star, I believe. And then I've got zucchinis in here and some squashes and unfortunately uh, squash bugs have decided they like them. So I don't know that I'm gonna get any harvest out of those, but that's all right. Up across the trellises, as I back up a little bit, the this trellis is Sunset Runner Beans, which are beautiful. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. And the hummingbirds just love them. I mean, look at that, that really pretty, the camera doesn't do it justice, but it's kind of a blushy apricot -y color and they're just lovely. Even if they don't produce beans, I think they're pretty. Um, this is bed number two. Bed number two has already had some stuff taken out of it earlier this season. This is really just kind of flower trials is really what it is. And I've got some sweet peas that are still hanging out from this spring. They're putting on pods and I'm going to save those seeds, which is why they're there. But in here we've got some really fun things. There's tassel flowers blooming. Um, I've got safflowers boom, blooming. Um, the, this is dill that's done and putting on seed heads. I've got a whole bunch of bead balm and we've got some osteospermum that are kind of coming out of bloom. This was snapdragons and I've got some perennial salvia right here. And then this is Queen Anne's Lace and the variety is Green Mist, which is so pretty. I love all the ferny texture on it. And then I've got calendras back there. Um, this is a black eyed Susan vine, which is growing up. And I think that one's a blush is what it is. I've got some cone flowers. I've got some corn cockles in here. So there's the corn cockles. They're kind of long and um, strappy, but I had a bunch of honeywort 
right in here and I pulled it because it was going to seed and I want to save the seed and make room for some other stuff that's coming up. And one surprising flower I'm just in love with is these corn cockles. They're so pretty. They're just so delicate and light. And somehow I've got a genetic morph, I think, because I've got a light purple one on one of these. And they're all supposed to be white. Yep, there's the purple one right there. So hopefully that is just a happy accident that I can save because I would love to save this one and have kind of a mixture next year. I think that'd be really pretty. But there you go. And then there's the Black Eyed Susan Vine. Um, let's see if I got a flower down here. Yep, there it is. It's kind of a blush color. The other ones I've got uh, white ones and then more of these blushy ones. All right, this is bed three. Bed three has had a lot of empty space in it because I was making room for bigger things in the back. So those are mostly cucumbers in the back. And then this guy right here that's kind of standing up, that is an okra. And he'll get pretty big. He's just started to take off here in the last week, but he's starting to put on some buds, which is really awesome. And then here in the front, this is an experiment for me. Those are liatris, which, or blazing star is what some people call them. And I'm so excited that they're coming in pretty well this year. So I'm looking forward to having blooms next year. And then along this edge over here, we've got some bush beans. Those are black turtle bush beans. And then I just had kind of, I tried to have peas over here, but I started them too late. So I had to yank them. And then there's some like flower seeds kind of in a couple places and some weeds. But let me show you this cucumber plant because it's really, really neat. Um, this is really all the bigger that it gets. There's actually two cucumber plants right here. And as you come around, it's spilling over a little bit, but you know how cucumbers can kind of just go crazy? This one is a miniature variety and it's actually a white cucumber variety. So that's what they look like. They're just really small like this. They don't get much bigger. Um, they'll get a little longer, a little fatter, but this one, once it turns all the way white is when it's ripe, which is really kind of fun. I got the seeds from Baker Creek, not affiliated, but really, really love this plant. And then I've got, you a Japanese beetle, that's gross, and sunset runner beans up and down this trellis right here, which are just going for it. They just love life and they are going for it. This is another favorite with the pollinators. More of the bees love it. There's a wood bee that has been so happy with this plant. And I think if I move this, you might be able to see there is a bee here. There he is. There he is. They just love these beans. Just love them, love them, love them. So hopefully that'll focus. It's trying to focus background, but you get the idea. Most of the time this afternoon, in the afternoon heat, everything's kind of gone to sleep. So I find a lot of bees asleep out here <laughs> in my plants. And then this is coming up on bed four. Bed four is a mix and mash of stuff. We've got determinate tomatoes. We've got a few different types in here. We've got a pink opal, which is a cherry type. We've got a firebird sweet, which is a larger type. And then we've got some beauty kings, which is another really big slicer. And I've got some fruit inside that I can show you, which I'm really excited about. The rest through here is we've got some peppers, some California wonder peppers. Um, I've got an eggplant over here. Tons of marigolds, tons and tons and tons of marigolds, which is wonderful. And then as I back up, I've got basil here in the front with another marigold. This is cardinal basil, which I have determined is my favorite basil, favorite, favorite basil. So this cardinal basil is amazing. It smells so good. It's got really, really strong stems and it is nowhere near putting up bloom stalks or trying to go to seed. It is consistently right now about 90 degrees per day and the heat index is getting upwards of 100 every day. Today's kind of cool because we got some rain this morning and it's kind of overcast so it's temperatures in the lower 80s but it still feels like it's close to 90 with the humidity and this stuff is going 
bananas. Now, one of the things that's really awesome about it is that like every other basil, you pinch it and you get more. But this one is like getting more on crack because <laughs> it just keeps going. And I know that there is a type of basil that you can get from Proven Winners. I think it's called a Maisel basil. And I had it last year and it was really good. Um, the leaves are super tender. It doesn't go to flower very early and it still keeps its flavor as it goes to flower. This one, I don't know if it'll keep its flavor or not, this basil, but it is so tasty. It is so aromatic. And one of the things that I also love about it is that it propagates really easy. Some of these I had propagated from just taking leaves off and sticking them in the soil. So if you're looking for a really easy, hearty basil, this cardinal basil is one that I recommend. Just as another like shout out to the smell of it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I cut some and put it in with cut flowers and the whole room smelled like basil for like three days. Like my whole living room smelled like basil, which was awesome, completely awesome. All right, and the last thing that I will say here about bed number four is that this is where I'm starting my asparagus patch. And there's a melon running through here, which is also running up the trellises. When I back up, you'd see it, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more when we get to the flower bed because it's just a copy. I'm checking and seeing how they grow in different places. But this asparagus, I started from seed, you guys. I started it from seed, which everyone told me you should really just start from crowns. But I thought, you know what? The seed is like three dollars I'm gonna go ahead and get it started from seed and see what happens and it is doing wonderfully I've got like little splashes of, splashes of it and I'm hoping that it's gonna to continue to grow in the next year and get more of it and then hopefully it'll start to like seed itself and eventually become quite a big space right here in this edge of this garden box so this is bed number five and I want to talk about this one for a second. These are tomatoes. They are all indeterminate tomatoes, all of them. I've got a bunch of different varieties in here. I will pop them up here on the screen so then that way you guys can go through and see because there's just, there are so many different types that it's difficult to try and name them off as I'm going through. Now I harvested a whole bunch of things from these bed, from this bed just today and even from the determinate tomatoes at harvest. Cutaway flash just to show you what you're seeing on the screen in actual fruit form. So um, ignore this, I bought this from the store. This is curly parsley. This is the cardinal basil, which I pulled a couple days ago and I'm gonna dry. I was using some of it fresh so it was in the water, but still smells amazing. Totally great. I've got tomatillos here. I've got California wonder peppers here, which Beautiful. I mean, look at those. Absolutely beautiful. I've got eggplants, which I only really got two eggplants, but they look lovely. Just lovely. I can't wait to eat those. I've got some beans that are started, and then I've got cucumbers. You can see I, I cut these off the vine a little late, so they're a little bigger. They kind of turn yellow. But when they're small and tender and they're the right size, they're white. So you can kind of see the difference. They're about the size of an egg when they're, or a duck egg when they're ready to pick. But these are still good. Um, my rabbits enjoy them. They're just a little firmer and I am going to pickle these, which is why they're still here. I haven't gotten to that yet. And then I've got Sunrise Bumblebee Tomatoes. Look at that color. Isn't that pretty? I've got Isis Candy Cherries, which are just standard red cherries. Beautifully sweet. Amazing tasting. These taste better than these do. These are prettier, but these taste better. I've got German lunchbox tomatoes, the ones that you saw out in the garden, which are kind of growing these little clusters. These are the pink opals off of the dwarf tomatoes. And then I've got over here, this is a paste tomato. I've got a Sioux tomato. This is a Sioux tomato, which it's got a horrible crack and I got a little bug eaten, but I'm going to cut out the good parts of it and it's hefty. Like this is a heavy, hefty tomato. And then got some more paste tomatoes. Um, this one is a Firebird Sweet. So it kind of is a little bit different shape, which is really interesting. And these are clumps. This clump is what the pink opals grow in um, when you're not harvesting them one by one. So I got a green one on here, but all these others were looking so good. I had to pluck them. And then 
Those are more of the same, more pink opals. And then we get into some of these really big ones, which I just picked this morning. We got a ton of rain, so we're going to see a little bit of splitting and cracking, which, you know. Worry about a little splitting and cracking your tomato. You can go ahead and cut that out. Basically, your tomato just drank a little too much, and he got some stretch marks. So this one is a mortgage lifter, and it is huge, super heavy, super big, beautiful, beautiful tomato. Um, this one and this one are beauty kings. Those are off those indeterminate or those determinate, the short dwarf plants that I had. And they're also like really heavy, heavy, heavy fruit. Now, granted, it did rain, so they're holding a little more water, but just really pretty. I love the striping on these. This is another beauty king. This is another firebird sweet. You can see it's kind of orangey as it starts to come up the side of it. Um, these are more firebird sweets. Just that kind of, I don't know, almost heart shape shape of them. And then this one is a, I think that this is a gold medal is what this one is. It's either gold medal or Dr. Witchies. I can't remember which one. I'm sorry about that. I plucked it and don't remember. Um, and this one actually is not a dwarf beauty king. Sorry. This is a pineapple tomato is what this one is. Um, but the beauty kings have got this kind of oblong attempted heart shapes on them so pretty. let me back up and you can see so this is bed four this is bed five bed five is all tomatoes now around the edges you're gonna see that I've got like a bunch of basil and marigolds and things like that to try and help deter pests which has been really helpful but everything else that's in there besides just those deterrents is tomatoes and I am <laughs> seriously growing out my ears of fruit in those beds, which is amazing. So you can see um, this line right here is about how tall the determinate tomatoes are, right where my finger is, right at that post, um, or cross beam from the arch. And then this is way above the arch, way, way above the arch. These arches are approximately eight and a half, eight feet tall. They're a little bit, they kind of vary depending on which bed they're in, but they're between seven and a half and eight and a half feet tall. So I'm saying eight by average. And you can see how much taller these are compared to the arches. So let's go take a look. I'll show you some of the fruit that's getting ready to ripen very shortly on both the indeterminates and the determinates. So you can get kind of an idea of a couple of things that you might want to try next year. So first couple of varieties, these are mortgage lifters and they are huge. I just picked like a giant one inside. I wish I had my scale. I don't have a scale right now, but I want to get one so that way I can start weighing how big these are. But this is a small one. <laughs> it's a small one and it's still the size of any of the ones that you can get at the grocery store, a little heavier. And then we've got, um, these are German pinks in here. We've got German lunch boxes over here, which are kind of these smaller ones. They grow in really pretty clusters like this. They're little kind of grape sized tomatoes. And on the other side over here, I've got tons of cherries and I've got Isis candy cherries and sun sunrise bumblebees or sunshine, sunrise bumblebee cherries, either one. I'll put it on the screen. We've got some Sioux tomatoes. We've got um, gold medals. We've got Dr. Witchies, Dr. Weiches. I don't know how you say it, whichever uh, in here. And those are doing great. And then over here on the back, kind of sprawling out our tomatillos. I've got Queen of Melanaco and Amaria tomato tomatillos, which I am not sure I'll grow again next year just because I didn't feel like I got enough harvest at the time that I wanted it, which might be a planting issue because they're kind of crowded, but they took off really well and didn't have problems fruiting. They're just kind of not putting off as much all at the same time that I wanted to. I've got another black eyed Susan vine climbing up here and on this other side as well, trying to climb. But the dwarf tomatoes or determinate tomatoes are really kind of the ones that are exciting because you can have a really good size full tomato. Like this is a solid tomato. This one is a Firebird Sweet. And then over here, oh no wait, that was a Beauty King, sorry. This is another Beauty King, these kind of striped ones. And then there's a Firebird Sweet in here somewhere. And then I've got um, pink opals right there, which are kind of a snack-sized tomato. 
and all of these have just been really really heavy heavy laden so much so that they're kind of falling all over and going in every direction so if you want something that isn't going to take up a lot of space but is going to give you a lot of fruit these determinate and dwarf varieties i got the seeds from victory seeds for each of these they are outstanding absolutely outstanding i think next year i'm going to do way more of these and fewer of the indeterminates just for a space reason because then they won't sh they don't cast as much shade as the determinants do but i've got a lot of plants in here i think i've got six tomato plants in this big huddle right here so don't plant them as close as i do I'll make it a little easier on yourself but still a lot of fruit in this area and this is one of my like favorite views because you can see the tomatoes and you can see the beans going up and down the trellises it's just Oh, it's just so pretty and this is bed number six. This is the last bed It's a little bit disappointing right now just because I've had so much harvest out of it, but you get the idea We've got sunflowers sweet corn and sorghum in this particular bed and then the trellis has um, White beans on it growing which are doing amazing. They're so pretty But the sunflowers I think and the sweet corn are not doing as well as I would have hoped for and some of the sunflowers in other parts of the garden are doing way better, way bigger, and I think that that might be a combination of variety because this is mostly pro-cut flowers and they don't, they're not ranked to get quite as tall as some of the others, but also I think it's a matter of sun issues because they are right here next to all of the indeterminate tomato jungle. <laughs> and the sun rises in the east, which is over that way, and then, you know, goes that way to the west. So. They don't get a whole lot of sun until really midday and then just very late in the evening because I've got a big shade tree overhead that kind of starts to do a shade path that creeps this way and starts to hit right about in between this right here at about, I think, 3.30. Everything is shaded from for beds four, five, and six. So sunflowers are looking great we're gonna have some really nice harvests out of this as far as seeds go because I want to save them and like roast some of them I'm trying to figure out which varieties I like best this year and it looks like the birds are beating me to this one already but the rest of them are looking really really pretty and I love them this one is a ruby eclipse which is exciting and I'm getting some multi-flowering on those. Um, this bright one is a valentine and I think these are all valentines actually. And oh, and I've got a black walnut fruit. So the tree that I've got up here is a black walnut tree and thankfully the squirrels like the walnuts so they stay out of the garden but occasionally I get those fruits in here I have to kick them out. And then this back here, these long, tall, spiky things that look like corn, is sorghum, or common name of broom corn, and it is just incredibly tall. I only had two stalks when I started, and just as an experiment, and they have spread out and grown so much more, which is amazing. And the nice thing is it's also a perennial, so they should come back next year. I think I might move them, because I don't know that I like them here. If this is how tall that they get in the shade, I can't even imagine how big <laughs> they would be in a full sun situation, but they have beautiful, beautiful tops on them. Like these are already, these have been gone to seed for a minute. And so I could pop them out and turn this into flour if I wanted to, I could mill it down. But I think it's just so pretty and I like that it's providing some sort of food for birds. So then hopefully they don't eat my tomatoes, <laughs> but they are really, really happy in this spot back here. And I think I might plant some more just cause I think it's fun. So that is the garden boxes, or raised beds appropriately termed, and we're going to head over here to the flower bed, the big flower bed, and show you what we got over here because this has been built from scratch and I'm really pleased with it now. You're going to see some ugliness because there's still some projects in the background going on, but you know, there's a plan. There's always a plan. So this is the back view of it, looking back towards the house which is over here of course and we've got all kinds of really beautiful textures and layers in here right now I'm totally in love with coming back here and looking at it from this angle so first up right here we've got some grasses which this is a miscanthus I don't remember which one exactly 
but it's finally blooming and it looks so pretty back here adding this kind of light grassy texture right at the end of the bed where I need it we've got a winter creeper we've got a hydrangea which I don't know what kind this is I thought it was a pinky winky I've had it for like three years in a container it never bloomed and then this year it decided it was gonna bloom white as a white panicle so I'm not exactly sure if that is because I have a different variety or if that's a soil composition, but it is really pretty and it kind of adds that some interest back here that I needed in this corner. I've got sunflowers right here. That one is heavy laden with seeds and needs to come out, which I'm gonna probably cut tonight, but I wanted to show you um, kind of what the head looked like before I cut them down. These particular three are Titan sunflowers. They're supposed to get 12 feet tall and the first one, Obviously did not, but the second two, especially this one right here, might. So we'll have to wait and see. I think that's fun. I think if I would have staked them a little better in the beginning, they may have even gotten bigger, but their stalks on these are like broomsticks. They're like enormous. Like I can put my hand almost all the way around it. So super pleased. That's a fun experiment this year. And then as I back up, you're gonna see this great big flowy thing going through and cobbling up everything else in the flower bed and it is because I have got pumpkins out here that are growing. Yay! So I've got two different types of pumpkins this year. I've got this one with all of the kind of speckled variated leaves which are really pretty and they look amazing in the morning when the sun just hits them. It's like they shine silver. Uh, this is a Tennessee sweet potato pumpkin, which is a pumpkin pie pumpkin. And then I've got another pumpkin I'll show you here in a second that is, I don't even know how to say it. It's some sort of French name. I'm sorry, I can't say it. I'll put it on the screen. But both of them, both varieties, I have pumpkins growing on right now. Let me show you. So there is the French variety name, which is like a Cinderella style kind of pumpkin, more, a little more decorative, could eat it, but I'm told it won't taste as good as the pumpkin pie pumpkin. So. He's in there, he's about the size of a softball right now. And this one is the pumpkin pie pumpkin, which is looking really great. Let me see if I can show you about how big it is. Get the camera under there. You can see about how, I can't get my hand around the bottom of it. So that gives you kind of an idea of how big it is. And as a little surprise, I have melons. Melons, we'll come back to those in just a second. So this is the other view of that same area. So you see the grasses in the background, you see the big sunflowers, which are towering, and then you see the pumpkin going all the way through everything. So the red flowers right here, these are echinacea, and they are trace sombreros echinacea. They kind of come in as multicolored, so sometimes their original bloom is red or orange or purple, and they all kind of fade to that same beautiful kind of warm, dark magenta. And then in the front, I've got a couple different kinds of daisies, which you may have seen me plant the first row first from on previous video. And then I've got a couple of these little new ones in here that I planted a little later. And then throughout each of these, throughout the pumpkin mess, is I have roses. And they're pink roses. I will pop a picture up on the screen of what some of the blooms look like. I've got two different types. I've got a gentle giant tea rose and then I've got a um, perfume something tea rose so I'll pop it up there on the screen so that way you know what it is but they are gorgeous they're hot pink and they provide this kind of beautiful pop of color coming up out of the pumpkin um, in this area I've got some anemones for next year a couple different kinds there is that other pumpkin it's another one it's a the French variety. So I did four pumpkin plants total, two of the pumpkin pies, two of the French variety, and thought I would see which one grows better. So the French variety started blooming first. It started putting on fruit first, but the fruit failed. And I don't know if it's because we got too much rain or just too hot. It just didn't do well the first couple. And the sweet potato pumpkin, the pumpkin pie pumpkin, did way better as far as growth goes. It's much bigger, much more vigorous. So if you're looking to try and take up a lot of space like I am and fill out, you know, kind of what you're doing or see how, you know, things are going to grow, that's a good one. It is huge. It is massive. The other one is going to play a little bit nicer if you try to fill in a flower bed with it. So if I would have known this, I probably would have planted these a little bit differently. 
but that's why you try things. You want to see, you know, what what works and what doesn't work. So as the pumpkin is continuing along this way, then you can see I've got this giant cloud of petunias. This is only five plants. There are three pinks and two whites, and the pinks are the Supertunia vistas from Proven Winners, the bubblegum variety, which are amazing. And I love that they kind of grew into this little heart shape, which I did not anticipate at all. It was not intentional, but I love how it came out. And then I've got, these are mini vistas white, I think is what it is. But absolutely, absolutely love how this is kind of taking over and that just a very small investment is yielding so much impact. Because as we kind of zoom back out, you see just how bright that is. It just gives this giant bright spot in the garden and kind of cuts some of the green, acts as a transition between spaces. And I wish that I would have planted more of these like along the front, but now I know for next year, you know, how big they are and which one may work there, which one won't. So the grasses that you see are lemongrass along the posts because mosquitoes are real and they are savage this year. So I planted a ton of lemongrass everywhere. I'm hoping to get a really great harvest out of them. And at the very least, even if I don't, they're pretty and they're doing a great job just kind of helping with some of the mosquito population in the garden beds anyway. As we scroll this way, we have got some really pretty things. So this is my zinnia patch and I just cut a whole bunch of them yesterday for a really, really pretty um, arrangement on my kitchen table. I will post a link to that in the description below, which is on my TikTok actually. You can follow some of the other things that are going on here a little bit more quickly on TikTok. It is TikTok at the Burbstead. So if you're looking to kind of get an update in between and just like want a one minute gla glance at something, um, there's a lot there. There's a lot about the cut flowers I've done this year. Um, some simple quick tips here and there. So check it out if you are on that platform. So as we zoom out, you can see we've got more sunflowers. I wanted sunflowers all the way up and down the fence line. And we've done that for the most part. I had a few in this area that I cut out already because they've already done finished blooming and they're setting seeds. And you can see I've got a couple more that I need to cut that are a little droopy. But these three are autumn beauty I believe is what they are I got them from Eden Brothers and they are huge you can see my neighbor in the background has a beautiful Japanese maple and you can see how tall they are compared to the Japanese maple and they've got multi buds at the top so they are gorgeous next thing you're gonna see down right about this level and then starting to go down is celosia and I've started all different types of celosia this year because I didn't know what was what I just had to see it to know what I wanted to do and so we've got tons and tons in here I don't remember all the variety names I'm sorry most of them I got from Florette um, some of them have already been yanked because they were just done but some of them I'm leaving in here because they are still green even though they're not flowering because they're providing a nice distraction and I think that the seed heads on these are really really pretty I mean these are all spent blooms but they're just they're just lovely even though they're spent so what I have over here though, these are Coxcomb Red or Celosia Argentine from Baker Creek. And those are gorgeous. I thought they were gonna be a little taller than they are, but they're not. So I just know for next year that this is more of a mid-sized Celosia rather than a super tall one. And to put them a little bit more in the front because I planted more Green Mist Queensland's Lace through here, which is starting to bloom now. It's running a little behind. And I think it's just a matter of watering. This bed is not fully set up on drip yet. And the raised beds are. And I think that's really what's made the difference is that these are just coming into maturity a little bit later, which is kind of nice actually to have like some things blooming at different times. Uh, I just never get tired of like that pan shot right there with all the zinnias and all the petunias. They're just, uh, they're just so amazing. Like this flower has been out here for a week and it is just gorgeous. This is a Will Rogers, if you're looking for a pretty red. And then this one is a warm white. It's called a polar bear. So, so pretty. Just, oh, so many more zinnias next year. So many more. So this is another pumpkin. You can see another pumpkin pie pumpkin. This is the one that actually has the pumpkin on it. So you can see him over there. Oh, and 
I was going to tell you while we were over here, in the middle of this, why we have kind of a hole looking down it, is we've got a melon. So this is a papaya dew melon. It's a hybrid between a papaya and a honeydew. And I don't remember where I got the seeds from. I got them online somewhere, but they sold out pretty quickly. So hopefully you can find them if you're interested, but I've got some pretty good size little melons there that should be coming up ripe here in the next couple of weeks, I would think. Hopefully sooner so I can try them, but that plant is just rambling everywhere. The idea of planting pumpkins and melons to take up space and keep down weeds has been glorious. It's such a great, great fill. It makes it not look so empty. Now, this area between my two lilac bushes, I had a ton of bachelor buttons and they've since been pulled out because they were going to seed and flopping over and the pumpkin and melon needed more room. So they got pulled out, but we still have a couple sunflowers. And then as we pan this way, we've just got sunflowers, cosmos, and lemongrass, which I think is just so pretty. It's such a pretty combination because you have the bold texture of the sunflower. You've got this light ferny texture with the cosmos and then strappy lemony texture with the lemongrass. And it smells amazing in the morning. It just smells like flowers and lemon, but that gives you the pretty view of what we've got in this bed over here. So panning around here to the back porch, we've got kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. Um, I built out this flower bed this spring. It was originally just a big rock pit, and so I pulled all the rock out, planted, put in these rain barrels, which are working. They are 65 gallon rain barrels, and they are awesome. Awesome, awesome, super easy to install. Definitely something to look into. And hopefully once I get the irrigation set up, these are going to irrigate the flower bed that you just saw. So around here we've got strawberries and then I've got a Sky, Skywalker boxwood. And here I've got some Denver daisies and some baby's breath, which has been really, really pretty just together. I think I'm gonna do more of that next year putting baby's breath in with other flowers to just kind of create little mini um, flower arrangements and containers. Um, there's some lamb's ear that is slated for the front yard that's just kind of hanging out until I can plant it. And then around the back here, we've got coleus, lemongrass, and impatience, white impatience, but look at how beautiful this coleus is. I wish that the lemongrass was not just swallowing it up, but it's probably keeping it a little happy since it provides a little bit more protection and shade, but this is a Wicked Witch Coleus, and I just love the leaf pattern. It's so pretty, so, so pretty. Floating around, we've got some Boston Ferns, which are super happy. Um, they're doing pretty well in the tops of those barrels. We've got more of that. This is a Euphorbia, I think it's Diamond Mountain is what it is. And then got some containers up there stuff that I'm kind of trialing testing out same thing back there I've got a rose bush and this is a polyanthus which I'm testing out to see if I like it enough to plant somewhere else and then we've got a whole bunch of plants for the front yard some hollies some perennials a couple other things um, I've got a spruce and just some other random flowers so oh, that is the mini tour and hopefully that's been fun. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing it. Um, I know I enjoy sharing my garden with people. I, it's just, so it's I'm going to sit down and, and tell you about this next thing. Um, it's super hot out here. Oh my gosh, it's so humid. I'm sorry if I look sweaty in the camera because I am. <laughs> just walking around out here in the humidity is terrible. Welcome to the Midwest in the summer. <laughs> But one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about is kind of a personal update. I told you there was, you know, this is kind of like a highs and lows and tomatoes. So you got to see tons of tomatoes, a lot of the different varieties that I have that are getting ready to bloom or ripen, excuse me, and then some of the ones that I picked already, which look amazing. Oh, I'm so excited. So excited for that. But the sad news is you'll notice that I'm out here doing this tour by myself and my normal fluffy little companion is not with me. And that is one of the reasons why I haven't had a video for quite a while. When I was getting ready to film 
this tour in June, so that way you could see kind of a June garden. I had this plan for see a June tour and a July tour, August, September, October tour through the summer. But my sweet Bella, my little old granny dog that I've had, she was almost 15 and she unfortunately passed away in June. Um, she came down with cancer and um, I just felt like it made more sense for me to just stop and spend the time with her and get get the most out of what I the limited amount of time I had left with her and she unfortunately um, did pass away in June and um, since then I just haven't been ready to uh, come out here and film I haven't felt as motivated to do it it's it's been a, a beautiful reprieve to have this garden and all the beautiful things out here because then I had something to go and look at something to take care of something to tend and it's not that you know my sweet bunnies you know aren't enough to tend or take care of but it's just it's not the same and I am I'm so glad that I had the quarantine time that we've had this spring to be able to spend every possible moment with her but I am you know significantly sad to have lost her you know and that's that's part of life things are always changing and you just have to be thankful for the moments that you get and I'm so very thankful that I had this period of time with her um, the last couple of months that she was with me so that's the low and I know that that's a little bit sad to leave a video, so I didn't want to end the video on that. I wanted to end the video on something great, which is that we have finally hit 100 subscribers, which is so exciting to me, and I'm so thankful if you are a subscriber that just joined in the last couple of months that you saw just, you know, very limited content. You saw some of my older content. I am so thankful for you for seeing the potential in this channel and our community and what we're growing here and I am so excited to share this journey with you going forward and for all of you that have been my subscribers for a long time even all the way back to the very beginning thank you so much for supporting the content here and you know I love seeing questions and comments on the videos I try to respond to every single one as quickly as possible so that way you know when you're watching things and you're going through your YouTube scrolling that you can actually get an answer on something so please you know put your comments on there, put your questions, let me know what you're thinking, let me know what you're growing, I want to know what's going on in your gardens also. So I hope you all are having a wonderful summer, I hope you all are staying safe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!